It's very near and dear to my heart, the idea of being able to preserve an individual's ability to stay in their own home. We knew that the demographics was such that here in the United States it was going to continue to have a lot of need and so we felt like investing into growing our services was going to be super important and puts us in a unique position to be able to be providing healthcare services in the area that uh, seems to be everyone's focus, especially after COVID-19. Because long-term care is something that a lot of people are going to need. In home care, our infection rate was significantly better than the normal population, even though we cared for the most vulnerable among us. And people started to take notice because normally people don't think about home care until they are in it. I'm gonna walk you through some demographics. Maybe some of you innovators are fully aware of and maybe you're not. But right now, over the course of the next uh, couple of years, the number of individuals in the United States who are over the age of 65 is going to double. We're gonna, we're, between 2020 and 2025, uh, we we are going to continue to enjoy the largest demographic, the highest growth demographic in the United States right now is people over the age of 90. By 2050, the number of individuals who are over the age of 65 will outnumber those that are under the age of 18 for the first time in the history of our country. If you took a poll and asked, where would you like to age? Nine out of 10 say, well, I wanna age at home. Does that match your own desire? Or do, do you hope that you get to go into a nursing home? Not usually people's dream, <laughs> that people wanna be able to age in place. And yet, 70% of us are going to require long-term care before we pass away. But only 11% of us are financially prepared for that fact. 11% are prepared, 70% are gonna need. If we think that it's gonna be all about our family, well, my kids are gonna take care of me. Think again. Right now, today, the average adult child lives 240 miles away from their aging parents. Gone are the days where we live, work, die, get married, have a family, all in the same community. We are much more scattered today than ever before. Along with the shifting demographics, the available workforce is gonna to continue to diminish. Individuals who can function as caregivers in the homes of their aging parents. You can see that that is going to become a bit of a problem. So the trends that introduce a little bit more of an opportunity to innovators. What we are seeing is a shift in healthcare reimbursement for decades. We've relied upon things like healthcare insurance to uh, fund our healthcare system. And that has been done predominantly through the concept of fee for service. You go into the hospital, you use a Q tip, that Q tip was $10. You remember those jokes back in the old HMO days when we were making fun of that kind of stuff? Well, those days are now past us where we are no, now more in a value based purchasing concept where we, we say, look at this particular patient. Maybe they're a, uh, a cardiovascular patient uh, with CHF and they've had a, a critical event in which they needed maybe a, a catheter uh, in, the, in the hospital. They're going home, they've gotta have rehab, they're gonna have follow-up care, et cetera. We're now saying we're gonna call that whole episode one price. And you, healthcare system, you can make more profit if you do a good job and consume less care, but we're gonna pay you based upon the diagnosis and upon how well you take care of that patient. What it does is it incentivizes our healthcare system to stop thinking so transactionally and start thinking a lot more with innovation and in introducing the opportunity for thinkers to come in and say, we can help achieve better outcomes at a lower cost by getting creative. The development of this concept of the homespital. This is the newest idea. We don't want people to come into the hospital. Why? because the average daily stay in the hospital is like the Four Seasons times four. It's $1,500 a day. That's expensive. That's really expensive. And so if we can keep somebody at home, what we have found is the outcomes are pretty good. We, uh, we have fewer hospital-based infections. We can even bring in with the right equipment a robotic surgical table with a robot surgeon and have surgery performed by a specialist that's a thousand miles away in somebody's home. You think, oh my gosh, that's not sanitary. But you know what? It's their germs. Their immune systems are used to it. 
So they're actually safer in their own home to receive surgery than they are in a sterilized OR. The science is really starting to follow through with this idea of we need to keep people at home and what can we do to make that happen? COVID took that conversation and fast forwarded it by at least five years because the hospitals shut down. They did not want people coming in and all these procedures that needed to still take place because, ha, shocker, the rest of the diseases didn't take a vacation because of COVID-19. We still needed to be able to treat those people. And so we started experimenting as a country in this idea of the homespital or sniff at home, the skilled nursing facility at home and surrounding a patient with infrastructure right there at home. That, that is gonna result in a lot of opportunity for innovators because for a doctor to really be able to monitor somebody in their own home, they're not gonna necessarily be able to go back to doing the home, home visits. They're gonna need things like remote telemetry to know what's going on with the patient without actually being there. That's, uh, there's some opportunities that exist in there. The focus that has turned to the social determinants of health, of really thinking about a patient from a much more holistic standpoint. This is where we're, we're developing predictive models to know what are your health outcomes going to be based upon your zip code. We can, we can predict based upon your education. We can predict based upon your living circumstances, how likely it is that you're going to engage in health habits that eventually result in disease process later in life. And so uh, there's a lot of innovation and a lot of ideas that are surrounding the concept of how do we have an impact on understanding and then influencing the social determinants that, that help us to know whether or not somebody's likely to have uh, struggles with disease. In home care, we love this because we do approach the person in a very holistic form and, a, and format and we try to help put in interventions that are gonna address the whole picture. So I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about the fact that uh, in, in just a few more years, we're gonna have 75 million people in the United States living with dementia. The statistic is one out of three. The old idea that dementia has to be dealt with in a, in a congregate living facility needs to die. And the reason why is because your brain separates out your short-term memory from your long-term memory, and the first to go is your short-term memory. Your long-term memory has anchors in things that we don't fully understand. So the solution is not to take somebody away from the environment that keeps them anchored and helps them to stave off the progression of the disease. Moreover, we just don't have the infrastructure for one out of three. We're gonna to need to figure out ways to be able to care for people in their own home. One of the most common uh, uh, challenges that we have is sundowners, people who are totally fine during the day, but for whatever reason, when the sun goes down, the challenges associated with cognitive impairment become much more acute and it becomes dangerous. So innovators, what if there was a light activated door alarm? <laughs> or one that is light activated, because here in Spokane, you can't always go by the time, right? Uh, you know, during the December, light never seems to ever shine. And then during August and July, it's like you know, light never goes away. But it, it really messes with people that have sundowners that could be considered dangerous. Well, what if it had a key code and that the key code activated? You can't open up the door. Why? Because maybe the only thing that is dangerous is that mom tends to wander at night. What if we could solve that crisis with $100 of hardware and a Wi-Fi connection? It's a lot cheaper than putting one of my employees in your home overnight for 12 hours, I can tell you that. That's where innovation is really gonna take some root and it's gonna be necessary because I'm just not gonna have as many employees uh, available to me as time goes on and we get more on that side of the age line than we have coming in the door. Uh, another, another challenge that we have, 42% of seniors experience loneliness. You take something like diabetes and you think it's all about the endocrine system. It's not. Your diabetes is 26% more severe when you're lonely. Human beings thrive off of these neurotransmitters in our brains and we get to experience oxytocin when we're around other human beings. And the amount of oxytocin that you experience has a deep impact upon your diseases. Too many of our seniors are experiencing loneliness in their own home. That's one of the reasons why I don't think that I'm gonna to get totally replaced by robots because we also offer the human connection. But human connections are expensive, so I need the supplement of your innovation 
to help drive down the labor cost of taking care of older adults. These older adults, though, have an aversion to, to technology. So whatever it is that you do, it needs to be very easy to use. I suggest that a phased approach is super helpful when it comes to innovation. We can introduce technology in a way that becomes very comfortable. So I'm hopeful that this has gotten the, the blood going a little bit on different ways that you can innovate and take advantage of opportunities associated with senior care and, uh, and, and know that this is going to be a, an area that needs innovation and needs innovators to get involved. Thank you so much.